Live from Maryland Stadium, I'm Wayne Viner, Dave Lamonico from Terrapin Times. There's football practice going on over to our right, but we decided to get away from all those whistles and all the noise. But you've been to a lot of practices. Everybody wants to talk about the quarterbacks. What have you seen? Uh, Josh Jackson looks like the real deal. Um, it has picked up right where he left off his freshman year at Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm pr impressed with his mechanics, his footwork, very smooth delivery. Um, a little bit elongated. It's not as it's not as quick as uh, as maybe Lance Lejean's mm -hmm. delivery, but I mean the mechanics are there. He looks like you know probably the best quarterback they've had in years. Yeah, and, and you guys at home are watching some of the quarterback throws behind us. But the next thing that comes up is Lance Lejean. Yes. He's moved up to what appears to be the second string at this yeah, point. surprising how um, we don't always see that around here. A lot of the quarterbacks that Maryland brings in as recruits, they're guys that need a couple years of development. This kid looks like he got some serious training down in, uh, down in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. um, he's he's more polished than we've seen in a long time for a right. true freshman quarterback. And when the young Terps come on, you guys can talk about QB1, QBU. What, what's the name of that product? QB1, yeah. Mason and Dave and Jordan will talk about that. My guy has been and still is Tyler DeSue. I like the idea that he's been here. He really did a nice job in the spring game. He seems to have all the tools. I'm not sure he has them at the level of Josh or Lance at this point. Right, and he's one of those guys that, that w was one of those developmental guys. He was a Walt Bell guy, um, you know, mm -hmm. uh, from a f few years ago, and it took him. He was not the highest rated guy. He was not even Maryland's first choice. Comes in here, it's taken him a couple years, and it seems like he's starting to get it. He is. Um, so. uh, running backs, and then we'll, we'll turn this over to the rest of the guys. That running back room is stacked. I'm sure everybody's seen by now on Twitter that the uh, McFarland run where he left over the linebacker and kept right. going. Man, he looks like he's got it all, but that's not just that's just the start of it. I mean, oh, yeah. You've got guys I mean, behind him. Talk about Javon Leak. Uh, Javon Leak would be starting for maybe nine or ten other programs in the Big Ten if he mm -hmm. was, you know, I'm. Th th those are running back one and 1A right there. They, they they will probably be on the field at the same time a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. um, those two are both going to get touches. So, yeah, Javon Leak's a – I mean, he's a big guy, but he's fast too. So, yeah. um, you know, he's got – Pretty similar, not not quite as quick and explosive as McFarland. But he's got a similar skill set. So. Right. Well, McFarland was not overrated when he came out as being about the 65th best player in America. I think they <laughs> had that right. So this is the Big Dog uh, preseason show, and we want to thank Rick Jacklich and the team for sponsoring this. We'll be back in a minute after these commercials with the Young Terps, Jordan and Mason, and Dave. You can stick around for that. Sounds good. Hmm. I would refer Jack Litch Law Group to anyone that I know because of their professional touch and they get the job done. They get it done timely and they do it right. As you just saw, our clients have trusted us. We need to reward that trust and we have with great results and great service. So call the big dogs right now, don't wait. Find us online at bigdogssmallfirm.com. Terp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. All right, and back here with Dave Lamonico and the Young Terps. Let's talk about QB1 a little bit. Lance Lejean obviously going to be the big feature, especially given that the other two guys involved with the show, one tours ACL pretty early on in the season, the other got disqualified for code of conduct violation late in the season. So it's going to be interesting to get an inside look at Lance's life down in uh, Baton Rouge. Yeah, I mean, it's not an area that Maryland heavily recruits. It's not something that us as reporters have been able to talk to kids here a whole lot about. So that's going to be interesting. And, um, you know, we'll get an inside look of, uh, you know, some high school football down there. And obviously seeing what more of Lance's personality. He's not a guy yeah. we've talked to a whole lot yet. So. Yeah, and of course, you know, the college decision, Florida State, Kansas, obviously, and then he ends up here in Maryland. Mm -hmm. And that should be played out in the show let's get back to what's going on here the receiver is obviously a crowded room what have you seen so far because there's a lot of guys yeah well uh i mean just sean jones was doing his thing until the acl yeah. um that's unfortunate um and you know that is a blow uh obviously but there i mean it's a stacked if there's a position besides running back uh, Maryland's probably deepest at receiver. Uh, Daryl Jones has pretty much stepped in. He's probably going to get that spot, um, you know, the wide receiver one spot. Uh, you know, Demas is the second receiver, and then either Savoy or Rashard Lewis is the slot guy. And then, you know, Isaiah Hazel looks like he 
he's put on some good muscle, some coming out of high school. Mm -hmm. um, still has some work to do, but, um, you know, looks good. Yeah, um, DJ Turner, obviously another guy oh, there. Yeah. It's just, it's going to be in those first few weeks, and they don't have much time this year. You know, Temple's a tough team, Syracuse. Mm -hmm. How do you think they're going to really figure out who is the guy there? At receiver? Yeah, slot. Um, receiver. It's, uh, it, it, you're going to have to wait till Big Ten play. We're going to see, I mean, because we're, uh, you know, Obviously, Merrill had Texas the first, the last couple seasons, so you got to see a little bit about what these guys could do. Um, some good teams early on, besides Howard, but you're not going to know maybe who separates themselves until they get into some of this. Maybe against Syracuse, you might see a little bit there, but it'll it'll take a few weeks, I would think. Yeah. I'd say one of the biggest question marks on the Terrapin roster right now is the defensive backfield. You know, we got Tino Ellis, but after that, it's kind of a mixed bag. Who do you think is going to step up in the the cornerback two slot? Oh well, Mar Marcus Lewis is is there top corner so um so he'll be he'll be fine there and then the, the tino and, and marcus are are pretty much uh you know uh, pretty similar in terms of that marcus lewis is probably the best corner on the roster in terms of fundamental standpoints and actually i'm not as i'm more worried about or if i were a terps fan i'd be more worried about the depth at defensive back more than the starters i think they're going to be okay there antoine brooks is obviously going to be fine he's their best player overall um and then uh, the free safety Deion jones looks like he's going to be ready to step on that spot but nick cross is going to be right there challenging the freshman that's coming in so it's it's more the depth behind ellis and marcus lewis that's the that's the concern it's kenny bennett's the top backup right there so <laughs> that's not a guy that many uh, Terp fans have heard about yet yeah, which and a little Vincent bit Fleither are guys that you know we, we haven't heard a whole lot about yet and those are the top backups so they've got something to prove we'll see um, yeah he's probably looking battling for a third on the depth chart maybe fourth on the depth chart at safety right now um, is a guy that uh, seems to have maybe been over recruited since he's been here um still has some work i mean he's done some okay things but i think others have pretty much surpassed him in the pecking order a little bit well my other guy's jordan mosley oh, I, yeah. i've heard a lot about him at safety i don't know if he's still really in the mix oh yeah definitely jordan mosley is, uh, is going to challenge for that spot um, i'm sure he's he's not going to start um but you know he should be heavy in the rotation he was in the rotation last year he's got excellent yep. ball skills um he's a guy that will probably be a starter towards the latter stages of his career. Yeah, and I think that's going to be one of the more interesting spots between him and Antoine Brooks, who kind of had that linebacker hybrid. Now they're going full right. safety in this defense. Yeah. So maybe over those, I mean, Howard obviously not going to be a challenge, but getting into those tougher games, it's going to be some adjusting for all these guys now because you're really looking at true linebackers and true safeties. There's not really right. much of the hybrid going Sure, on. sure, and there is an adjustment. But you got to remember a lot of times, and, and defensive coaches and coaches, they'll tell you this all the time, that's their base. I still think that Antoine Brooks will still play sort of a nickel role. I still think Jordan Mosley is going to – it will still – I mean, they're still going to fit into in this sub packages and things like that. You'll see their base – I think defensive coaches, what do they say, like 30% of the time, and they're always shifting. Yeah. So I think that it will be an adjustment in some packages, but these guys will still do what they do. And you are listening to a Terp Talk Young Terps mega podcast, which is also brought to you by Allied Party Rentals. Let's talk about a little bit of the line play. Um, on the offensive side, seems like they've kind of got what they want out of the starting group, but past that, might be another spot where they're challenged with depth. Yeah, and that's been their problem the past, uh, you know, the past couple of years. It's been, you know, um, have some solid starters, and then those guys have almost worn down, and they haven't looked as good because the depth is not as quality backing them up. Um, and that could be a problem again this year, especially you're looking at that back end of that schedule with the five games. Is that starting group going to get worn down again? Um, they've really got to develop some some quality depth. And there's questions on the starters this year too. So that that's a major concern on the offensive line. Yeah, you got a lot of new young guys, but then I yeah. think they're really going to have to lean on their certain guys like your Johnny Jordans, Marcus Minor, you know, the guys that played right. in to be really be leaders and step up and kind of – Get some of those, you know, redshirt freshmen through the season. Oh, right, right, right. And I mean, everybody just assumes Jalen Duncan's just going to. I mean, he's yeah. a redshirt freshman who's never played a snap. I mean, he could he could struggle. We don't know. He looks good, but you we just don't know. I mean, it's unproven. So we got to see how he does too. You always hear about Ellis McKinney being the only real depth on this line. Do you think that's still yeah. the case this um, far in the camp? Yeah. I do, I do, because they lost. Well, Tier and Hunt looks okay. They took a big blow losing T.J. Bradley, yep. who was supposed to really step up. Um, but Ellis McKenney is sort of like that super sub that can mm -hmm. that can go at any spot. And um, you know, beyond that, it's a lot of questions. I just think, like, even looking at what he did in that practice, you know, the short time that we're allowed to really see what's going on, 
he's flipping spots. He's oh, he's yeah. everywhere. Yeah, and that's and, what he did last year. Yeah, the same thing. Yeah. Another guy, I think they might have to go to the guy that they got from Juco, Paris. What do you think of him? Yeah, Paris Heath. He, he's a guy that, you know, you, you would hope that you, he, he, I don't think he's ready. I don't, I honestly don't, guys. I mean, they, he needs some, he needs a little bit of work. He's, um, he's a, he's an okay run blocker. He's really got some work to do with pass yeah. blocking and some of his fundamentals. I, I really would be surprised if he, if he plays this year, Maryland might be in a little bit of trouble. So, <laughs> so let's move over to another Juco guy that they got uh, Sam O on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. Okay. So if we're going to defense, um, Sam O is a guy that, that has drawn praise from the coaching staff. Um, they like, they like his explosiveness. He's a guy that had 17 and I think 17 and a half sacks or something. Or He did not play against good competition. So we have to keep that in mind. Um, that's always a question mark with Juco's. Um, that didn't come from programs like Lackawanna, like some of the some. I mean, he came from a school in Minnesota that played basically nobody. So we're going to have to see how he does. But yeah, he looks like a good depth piece, that could possibly. Oh, well, moving right along with the transfer idea, though, you have the linebacker core, which is headlined by two transfers, Shaq Smith, Keandre Jones. But we run three to four linebackers. So who else do you think is going to step in, specifically in the inside of the linebacker core? Uh, as starters or depth pieces? I'd say I mean, both, honestly. Okay, so the starters look like Iandy I Ely or Ace Ely. Um, he's really stepped up and drawn a lot of praise from the coaching staff. Oh, Pap Papuchis has, has talked about him a lot. Um, and then Chance Campbell is, is has drawn rave reviews. Um, had the starting spot in the spring ball because Isaiah Davis was hurt. Looks like he's probably going to keep that starting spot over the veteran Isaiah Davis, who will be the backup. So. Yeah, that's... Boy, Isaiah Davis, he's been, I feel like he's been around here forever yeah, at this point. Yeah, he's been around a long time. And really being I mean, challenged for that starting spot going into this last year is kind of, it's got to be rough. Right, yeah. right, right. Well, Maryland's lack of, I mean, he might have been unseated as a starter before this, but yeah. Maryland had a lot of, I mean, they didn't yep. have depth at linebacker. So One more question I got for you inside on the defensive line. Will the Gaddy step up this year, and who's really looking good? Yeah, I mean, we've asked Loxley about this a couple times, and he basically gives a, you know, all those guys are progressing kind of answer. He won't speak about them specifically. Um, I think that, you know, Breon has gotten to the point where he can rotate in. Um, we'll see. We'll see. It's uh, still sort of uh, jury sort of out. So we'll see how they go. Yeah, that's that's my spot. That's where I got to see the improvement. Yeah, you know, no getting doubt. into these guys. It's a wrap. Is that a wrap? Yeah. All right. All right. And thanks, Dave, for coming on. And No problem, guys. Tell the uh, Terp Talk and Young Terps fans where they can find you. Yeah, uh, terrapintimes.com, just like that. And uh, at MD Terrapin Times on Twitter. All right, thanks, Dave. And this podcast is brought to you by Allied Party Rentals and the Big Dog, Small Farm, Rick Jackalich.